to an understanding visual impairments. I met with Glenn who told me about his daily life. Yeah, so my name is Glenn. I live in East London and I work for a local authority in their printing section. Um, I'm also a blogger in my spare time and I like going out and about. I'm a bit of a culture vulture. Okay. I go into theatres and museums, things like that, with my girlfriend and going out for walks and just exploring the city in general. So aniridia means I don't have an iris in my eye, a coloured circle, and that controls the size of your pupil to, to determine how much light comes in and out of your eyes. So because I don't have the iris, or not fully formed one, it does, I don't adjust so well to changes in light. So I'm overly sensitive to glare when it's sunny outside and I take much longer to adjust in the dark and I don't adjust to as much degree as everyone else as well. So um, yeah. yeah, I struggle to changes in light. And then nystagmus means that my eyes shake and wobble about all the time. So I don't notice that particularly unless I'm particularly tired or stressed, but it does mean that I can't kind of focus on anything clearly at distance um, because obviously there's no time for my brain to focus on it. So um, everything has to be close up or enlarged for me to see it clearly. Now for me, I've kind of, because I've always had it all my life, this is, this is my normal. So. I've never known any different, I don't feel like I've lost anything, I've just lived with what I have. I think generally there's often a, a misconception that people who are disabled in any way can't, can't do anything really. If you're visually impaired then you must be blind and you can't see anything at all, you can't go out and enjoy things, you must be just leaving this quiet, sort of miserable life or just this very basic life. So I kind of want to show that I am able to get out there and do stuff, be it theatre or you know, cinema, museums or ab sales or talks or whatever, I just want to show that I can live a normal life like everyone else. I just have to do it a bit differently, that's all. So, you're abseiling. Mm -hmm. I really want to know more. Nystagmus Network got involved um, to, sort of, to raise money for research into Nystagmus because there's no cure for it. So, yeah, they just put out a call for people who wanted to do it. And uh, my girlfriend and I saw it and we said, well, should we do it together? And we said, we said yes, and we signed up and thought we'd give it a go. Yeah. So. That was quite an emotional experience. Mm, it was fantastic, though. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'd never done anything like that before. Getting off the edge was quite daunting at first. I mean, yeah. my girlfriend does climbing, so she's quite used to kind of that kind of thing. But for me, it was a bit more daunting trying to fight that urge to kind of lean back off the edge. It's countering every kind of thought your brain is having. Mm. You know, but um, once you get over and you're in the air and you realise you've got full control and you're safe, it's absolutely amazing. What about um, the Soundscape app? You're saying you've had a chance to look at that? I've had a little look at that, yeah. I mean, I, I know my local area quite well. Um, and when I'm going out and about, I've usually got a place in mind that I'm heading for already. But yeah. um, I do go out for like random walks and things sometimes because it's such a huge city. There's always lots of places to explore. So if yeah. I have a free day, like a bank holiday or something, to go out for a walk or you know, yeah. one day on a weekend, I've got nothing to do, then yeah, I'll go out for a walk and use the Soundscape app just to pick up what's around me, just in case anything interesting comes up. Soundscape uses 3D sound to let you know what's around you. For example, if your destination is on your right, you'll hear an audio signal emanating from that direction. And as you face towards it, you'll hear it right in front of you. A cafe coming up on your left will sound from that direction. Cafe. Lighting up your way with sound. In your time in education, do you think that you got enough age with that? or? When I very first started in education, I, I, the very, very first school I went to was actually a mainstream school. Um, but I was bullied there by the other kids, so I didn't have any confidence to start with. because the. Kids were bullying me and the staff there didn't know how to help me either, so I struggled in classes. So I didn't have any kind of confidence at all. I went to a special school for the visually impaired. I was obviously very shy to start with and got teased because of that. I was very shy in class and things. But gradually, as I was kind of settled in and found out there were things I'm good at, my confidence grew, I made more friends, and it's just kind of evolved from there. So you did an exchange trip in America. Was that with the, it was with the blind school as well? Yeah, so my um, school in Exeter, they teamed up with the Kentucky School for the Blind. Um, so some of their students came over to us for a little while, and then we managed to arrange a trip over there. I was kind of college age at this point. Um, so we spent two weeks in America. Um, before we went to them, we went to New York first. We went to Washington for a few days until the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument and the Capitol Building, places like that. Then we spent a night in the Blue Ridge Mountains in a youth hostel out there. And then we spent a week in Kentucky with the school. So some of us stayed at the school and then some of us stayed with the families as well during the week. We kind of switched it round and we went to lessons with them and explored the area. 
went to the um, baseball museum they've got there and the zoo they've got there. It was just a fantastic experience. Do you think when you swapped into the American school, do you think the way that they treated you is different or is it a similar kind of...? It's a similar kind of environment. I mean, I think all special schools that I'm aware of anyway, they try and make things positive and mm. give you confidence and independence. That's the purpose of them being there, to kind of help you be independent when you leave. So it's all about, yeah, building up your confidence and independence, yeah. You think like a message that you would send out to maybe younger people with uh, vision impairments? Yeah, I mean, my tip to other people would be you know, find your passion, find something you're good at, find something you enjoy, get confidence in yourself that you can do something like that, something you're good at, and that everything will kind of evolve from there because you'll get to know other people who are good at that, those things, whether it be sports or music or computers or blogging or you know, theatres or whatever it may be that is your passion. Um, if you meet other people who enjoy the same things as you, then you will naturally form friendships that way. It's much easier to form friendships that way. And once you start, it's kind of a domino effect. You kind of get to know more and more people and have more and more experiences. After spending a few days with Gwen, I understood him and the challenges he faces. As Gwen quoted, the common expectation of visually impaired people is that they are blind and live a lone and miserable life. And that is definitely not the case here. It was really empowering to hear how Glenn is living with his impairment with such optimism. He is actively making a difference for his community and we can all follow his example.